I'm sure many of you would agree we're experiencing one of the most exciting times in the history of mountain bikes. Some of you would also share the view that actually we're doing things on mountain bikes now which they were designed to do in the first place. And what about the idea that e-bikes is where the key innovations are taking place? Actually, cut that, let's not beat around the bush. We're in Kitzbühel, we've got two amazing e-bikes to chat about, and we're also in the presence of the mighty Hanenkam, one of the oldest and most feared World Cup ski runs in the world, with sections such as the Strife and the Style Hang. Wow, what a place. But seriously, backdrop and bikes aside, it's a vital question that every EMTB purchaser has to ask themselves. What e-bike would you buy? Should you buy a hardtail bike? A full suspension bike? What about enduro bikes? Well, for normal acoustic bikes, it's already a complex topic. But throw in motors, batteries, software, system integration, and much, much more, and it becomes even more of a minefield. Which is why Fazua have invited us out here to this stunning Alpine location to discuss the topic that, well, even bikes with a motor offer a multitude of decisions. Wow, we have some great bikes to chat about today, I promise you. Now, the first question to tackle actually is what comprises of an e-bike drive system? Well, it's pretty straightforward. It's the motor, the battery, the display, and the control. Now, the system we're using on the bikes today is actually the Fazua Ride 60. Uh, it's 60 newton meters of torque, uh, 450 watts peak, but the key thing about this system is it's small, compact, and lightweight. And actually, it means that this bike, or that bike, is simply a world apart from a traditional MTB in terms of its capability. But at the same time, I'm sure you agree, it doesn't actually look that much different. The compactness of Ride 60 allows more versatility in frame design, which means engineers have excellent freedom of suspension layout, are not compromised on geometry by a large motor, which we'll come on to later, and most importantly, awesome looking bikes. So it's probably time to roll out our first example. This then is a full suspension EMTB using Fatsua. As you can see, it's quite a looker. The capability here is immense. A bike with suspension front and rear will give you control, comfort and confidence in off-road situations. Not massively heavier than a hardtail, but quite different in handling. Slacker and longer for stability in rough terrain. I cannot get over how neat and tidy the front of house is on this bike. The display and the control there is so sort of minimalist, it's great. Uh, anyway, which leads us to question number two. Suspension, travel, do you need it, yes or no? Well, the answer to that might actually lie in one of these two bikes, the Pivot Shuttle SL, or this, the Transition Relay. Now, there's a lot going on with this bike, as we'll find out during the day, but some key details are that this is the 29 inch version of the bike. It comes with 160 mil travel front and rear, compared to the pivot, which we'll talk about in a minute, which is actually 132 rear and 150 front. Um, but another thing you might wanna consider when it comes to travel is how much do these bikes weigh? Now, this bike weighs in at 42 pounds with the battery and 38 pounds without. Now, if you put that into perspective, Transition's non-e-bike, the Spire, actually weighs in at 38 pounds as well. So, as you can see, when it comes to light and nimble, this bike is actually not gonna be far off the non-e-bike version. So the question asked folks is, why would you actually buy a Spire, a non-EMTB, when the relay actually is around about the same weight? I don't actually know the answer, but please let us know in the comments down below. But there's one other thing to think about with the relay bike. It actually comes in two versions. Like I said, this is the 29 inch version, but they also do 
a Relay PNW Pacific Northwest. And that comes with a 29 front and a 27.5 rear and a coil shock. Uh, but folks, one thing to think about when we're looking over these bikes today is that the battery is actually demountable. Now, the Fazua system comes either with a demountable battery or one which is fixed into the down tube. But what I will say is if you're traveling and want to charge the battery in a hotel, that's possibly the way to go. Weight then, a seriously important factor when it comes to an EMTB. I just want to qualify one thing I said a minute ago, the fact that the Spire weighs uh, 38 pounds and the Relay weighs 38 pounds without a battery. Bear in mind the Spire is an aluminium frame with a GX group set. But nevertheless, material is certain, th certainly something you might need to consider with an EMTB. But um, lightweight, compact, and would you say elegant? These bikes are on average around about four kilos more than an MTB, but obviously with a ton more features, and that's what we're gonna to turn to next. The difference between Fasua and higher power EMTBs is the way the power rolls in and out, and is quite different to a full power EMTB. Some riders, particularly lighter ones, might feel they're not being pushed up the hill so much, so to speak. The reason for this is the lower power 60 Nm on the ride 60 compared to say 80 to 90 Nm on the higher power ones. Obviously more power means a requirement for more juice, which in turn leads to a slightly heavier bike. Okay, next up, should you choose a hardtail or a full suspension bike? And let's face it, if you're going lightweight with the Fazua Ride 60 system, why not go super lightweight? Okay, so you might have heard your mates harp on about how great hardtails are. Let's talk about the details. Now, a hardtail will come with a suspension fork up front most of the time and rigid on the rear. They're known for their sharp handling and, as I mentioned, their light weight. But I would argue that a full suspension bike is probably more versatile and is probably just as quick up a smooth track than a hardtail. And that's actually what a hardtail is great at. They're great at cycle paths, forest roads, and smooth single track. But why not, let's do a head-to-head -head full suspension versus hardtail up a steep bank in the Alps. Okay, hardtail, steep seat to angle, steep head angle, and yeah, the fair dudes, they do feel pretty tight on a little climb. But remember, that's smooth. Let's try the old pivot shuttle. 132 mil travel on the rear, 150 up front. Ah, do you know what? Yes, it is marginally slower. But a big reason for that is actually the super tacky cut tires which are on this bike. So yeah, quite a different bike in the Italian-made Villa Triestina. Uh, what I also didn't tell you guys was is that this bike's actually got the, um, the Ride 50 system which has got a little bit less torque in it. But yeah, the whole business of hardtail versus full suspension. What I will say is that a full suspension will offer you a more comfortable ride. It'll probably give you more confidence in technical terrain. And yes, when you go into that technical terrain, that's the kind of places which bikes like that are not really too fond of. But one last thing is think about what you might be doing in the future on your e-bike because an e-bike will, I guarantee you, open up more possibilities and you will definitely be doing more riding. Now one thing to uh, consider when you buy an EMTB is the whole front of house, which I described earlier, the handlebar and top tube area. Now obviously, many of us spend our lives behind screens, so the last thing we want to do when riding a mountain bike is to have a big screen in front of us. And it just happens that the Fazua uh, Ride 60 has got a pretty low key approach. So what we have here is the, the controller on the uh, inside the grip here and the display on the top tube. Now, before I go into the controller, I want to point out that Fadua, I've chosen to put the display there for a couple of reasons. First, it's stealth, but also it's actually in the center of your line of vision. So you haven't got to look sideways when you're looking at such things as the, uh, the mode or the range left in your battery. 
But when it comes down to the controller, there are three modes on, on the Fazua. Actually, there's possibly four, but um, or maybe even five. But the main ones are Breeze, River, and Rocket. However, and this is the important thing, you can actually push the controller forward a touch, and it'll actually give you 12 seconds at 450 watts, which means that is proper boost mode. There's also a walk mode, which is actuated by the controller there very instantaneous um, and also a light and a USB port on the top of the display so you can connect your uh, mobile phone and remember you can also connect to uh, Garmin, Wahoo or actually any other third-party device on this bike because let's face it there's so many metrics which you can get of an EMTB which you cannot on an MTB. I think it's timely then, amidst some beautifully tangled route, to introduce you to the new Pivot Shuttle SL. Now, I've already talked about the transition relay and the fact that that comes in either 160 Travel 29 or also the Pacific Northwest version, which is 29, 27.5 and 170 mil travel. But the whole business of travel, does it matter? Yes, it does. I personally think that a full suspension bike is a great all-rounder, certainly. Um, very capable in a mix of terrain but it's not just the travel that counts so you need to think about this when you're buying your e-mountain bike so even though this bike has actually got less travel it's actually 132 on the rear and 150 up front it's actually some of the geometry numbers which makes a bike capable so this bike um, used in such places as these beautiful routes um, has got a slack head to bound I think it's 65. It's got a low bottom bracket. It's got a long wheelbase. And it's also got a suspension tune, which is actually really quite strong. And what that means is, is that bike doesn't bottom out, you know, in a pile of trouble like this. So travel, quite a complicated business in itself. <music> Okay, folks, activate boost mode. Oh boy. <laughs> now, just want to remind you that we're actually uh, riding 132 mil travel bikes on the Fleck Arm Trail, which I have to say in places, the equivalent of World Cup downhill. Uh, right, folks, buying an e-mountain bike, there probably are a ton of other things to think about before you even talk about the motor and the display and things like that. And two of those are price and looks. Well, looks matter, right? Um, but there's other things too, such as the sizing. Now, please, please, please don't let anybody tell you that the bike fits you if you believe it doesn't. Don't walk out of the shop with a bike which is too small or too big for you. So the first thing to think about is to get some good advice or possibly go to some uh, test days, many around the world, to get the fit right of your e-mountain bike. And finally, intended use. By this, I mean the type of riding you'll be doing and might be doing. I'll tell you why, because an EMTB really is a game changer. If you used to go 10 miles, you'll probably now go 20. If you need 1,000 meters of climbing, you'll now do 2,000 meters. And if you're excited about riding MTB, then you'll be falling over yourself to get out of the door with an EMTB. I know what you're thinking, folks. Well, for the record, 180 horse. Wow, what a great time we've had. Uh, and it proves that an e-mountain bike is a tool that allows you to ride through the mountains and not simply ramble through them. But when it comes to choosing the type of e-mountain bike, we've seen that the, uh, the transition and the pivot and probably more bikes to follow, which are sporting the Fazua Ride 60 system. It's a ride which is subtle and silent and certainly not dominated by the motor. And I think these two bikes are actually a confirmation of an existing category, an existing lightweight e motor bike category, which I say is lightweight, silent and nimble. I think that's it, folks. Let's know your thoughts on these two, three beautiful bikes. It's time now to go and sample the Hanukam and also 
an apple strudel. Get in there.